Seven decades ago, in the aftermath of the Nazi atrocities, Eleanor Roosevelt and René Cassin assembled for the first meeting of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. The founders had a dream to reaffirm the principle of human dignity and to guarantee fundamental freedoms for all. But over time, dictatorships hijacked the world body. Sudan, whose leader is wanted for genocide, was a regular member of the Human Rights Commission. In 2003, the murderous regime of Libya's Muammar Gaddafi was elected as chair. 1946, Eleanor Roosevelt, 2003, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. This was the final straw. In 2005, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan recognized publicly what we human rights activists had said all along, that the world's highest human rights body was plagued with, quote, politicization, selectivity, and a credibility deficit, all of which, he said, cast a shadow upon the reputation of the United Nations system as a whole. At Kofi Annan's initiative in 2006, the commission was scrapped and replaced with a new body, the Human Rights Council. The reformed body, it was promised, would be composed of members committed to human rights who would address the world's most severe abuses. Ten years later, we ask, is the new body living up to the promises of reform? Well, consider its record in responding to gross violations. In over 50 sessions, only 14 out of 193 countries have ever been condemned by the new council, less than what even the discredited commission had accomplished. Sadly, at the UN Human Rights Council, the majority of the world's abusers continue to enjoy impunity. In China, 1.3 billion people are denied freedom of speech, assembly, and religion. Tibetans are tortured. The Council's response? Silence. On the contrary, China was elected as a member of the Council. In Russia, dissidents are harassed, arrested, even assassinated. Vladimir Putin's regime launches bloody wars, invading Ukraine and swallowing Crimea. The Council's response? Silence. On the contrary, Russia too was elected a member. In Saudi Arabia, women are subjugated and beheadings are at an all-time high. Saudi warplanes have killed 10,000 civilians in Yemen. The Council's response? Silence. On the contrary, Saudi Arabia too was elected a member. And faced with reports of torture in Algeria, forced child labor in Congo, attacks on dissidents in Cuba, abuse of foreign workers in Qatar, incommunicado detentions in the United Arab Emirates, the imprisonment of Caracas Mayor Antonio Ledesma and other democracy leaders in Venezuela, and arbitrary arrests in Vietnam. What has the Reformed Council done over its 10 years of existence to protect these victims? Absolutely nothing. On the contrary, the UN elected every single one of these abusers as a council member. With 62% being non-democracies, the council's current membership is the worst ever. That's why victims are ignored and criminals get a free pass. But now consider where the 47 nation body is active. In the 10 years of its existence, the council has adopted 67 resolutions against one country, Israel, which is six more than on the rest of the world combined. The resolutions are introduced by the Palestinians together with the Arab and Islamic states and are backed by an automatic majority. Now let's be clear, liberal democracies have their share of blemishes and Israel is no different. It should be held to account like every other country. But when the UN acts so selectively, it fails to demonstrate a genuine concern for human rights. And so I wonder, if Eleanor Roosevelt and René Cassin were alive today, would the founders of human rights at the United Nations not conclude that their dream has now turned into a nightmare? <laughs>